Welcome to the South by 2021 panel about sports, music, work, and equality. And we have three amazing guests here today. I'll have them introduce themselves. Karan, I'll start with you. Hello, I'm Karan Butler, assistant head coach of the Miami Heat, NBA champion, two-time NBA All-Star, and also an author. Waka. All right. My name is Waka Angusa. I am the chief curator and vice president at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in Cleveland, Ohio. <laughs> Vince. I am Vince Gennaro. I'm the associate dean of the NYU Tisch Institute for Global Sport uh, down in, uh, in New York City. And uh, that follows a 20-year career I had at PepsiCo, uh, where I was an executive running uh, soft drink and snack businesses around the, the world, and uh, also wrote Diamond Dollars, The Economics of Winning in Baseball, and have a show on Sirius XM on sports analytics. My name is D.L. Walker, the VP of Partnerships for Yellow Brick, which is an ed tech platform that helps people pursue their passions. We have courses in sneakers, uh, streetwear, film, TV, all the hot and, and exciting things people are trying to pursue these days. Super excited to get into this conversation with these three amazing guests, and uh, let's dive into it. So, Karan, I mean, thank you for, for being on the panel. Um, you know, today's panel is about sports, music, work, and quality, uh, equity, I should say. Um, would love to learn a little bit about your story. You know, I know you've started, you know, from humble beginnings to going to UConn, to playing in the NBA, to doing an amazing documentary with 360, um, to now be an assistant with the Heat. Just to love hearing your story and some of the, the skills you've picked up along the way that you see as transferable into what you're doing today. Well. Uh... First and foremost, uh, it's a pleasure and honor to be on the panel um, uh, with all the technical difficulty that we had to make this happen. You could tell how committed I am to this process and, you know, making sure that my story be told and somehow, some way it can fit into the fabric of, you know, someone out there that can be inspired by it. But my family come from Columbus, Mississippi. Uh, they migrated from the South. Uh, and out of all places, they came to Wisconsin, uh, predominantly white state uh, coming from the South. And, you know, it was a lot of, you know, hurdles that we had to overcome coming into that whole environment. And, you know, we came up there for work. My grandmother worked in assembly lines at uh, JIK's company. My uncle had came and recruited her. And, you know, it was it was always challenging, one, because being on the assembly line and working in the foundry in the factory as a woman, as the matriarch and patriarch of the family, it was extremely tough for her. So that was a hurdle, you know, and as I touched on, you know, when you're talking about under 7% uh, minority uh, community in the state of Wisconsin, that was a challenge as well, because we was learning how to migrate and navigate um, in that, in that space. And in that process, all the things that you can visually see and see as an obstacle growing up, whether it was the drug sales, whether it was the, the violence on the streets, you name it, I saw it. And that's what I was exposed to. So um, as early as the age of 11 years old, you know, I watched my uncles, you know, get involved into, you know, criminal activities. And it, become, it became a norm for, you know, males in general in our environment to do something uh, of that capacity. And I kind of just followed the trend. You know, I, I was working a paper out for the Journal Times and then I start, you know, selling drugs. You know, my first pack came from, you know, my uncle Frank. He had gave me some drugs to get on my feet because I was tired of asking my mother. I was tired of asking my grandmother for, you know, extra money and things like that. So I started hustling. I started selling. And it was like the beginning to the end. You know, the things that I saw on the street, sneaking out the house, uh, seeing friends get shot, some of my friends murdered, seeing myself being caught up in all types of situations and scenarios, uh, in and out of jail as a juvenile, eventually getting sentenced to two years in car incarceration. Uh, that was a norm for me for quite some time. And it wasn't until I went to Ethan Allen Boys to school 
where I got the two-year sentence, um, where I was able to get and be alone with my thoughts and, you know, just really tap into being a better version of myself, knowing that I didn't want to continue to be part of that recycle, uh, recycling will. And I, I started thinking differently. I wanted to make my, the women in my life proud, specifically my mother and grandmother. So I start just thinking about how I can, you know, one, obtain a job again, and be successful in that capacity and just start from that foundation and that's what I started doing. Well, that's that's amazing. I mean, starting from there and then going on to what all the amazing things you've been able to accomplish, what would you say are like three things that you've been able to pick up that if you had to share with people coming after you, you'd want them to know? Uh, you know, always being determined, uh, I think dedicated and disciplined. That's been like the core foundation and then just always being open to constructive criticism from people you respect. You know, I think that, you know, sometimes the criticism thing get crazy because, you know, because of social media, and because, you know, we're all public figures, you know, you post something unless you're private, people are going to, you know, have a, a, a certain view or perspective of your life and what you're doing. But I always respect the opinions of people that I respect. And those people help shape and mold me to who I am today. So uh, mentorship is so important. Now I sit here on the sideline being an assistant coach of the Miami Heat. And I think it's this paramount that, you know, we have, you know, assets on the sideline and, and, and in people's life. And I think it's crazy that, you know, in our culture, man, you, 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 you have so many instances where people are talking down and frowning upon other people they should be learning from. And I think that, that's huge, and I think that is changing, and that's why you're seeing more and more successful people uh, woke, rather, as they say, but, you know, just being aware. Well, I mean, number one, it's an honor to meet you, um, like Mr. That. Butler, truly, from L.A., <laughs> I'm Laker fan here all day, um, but I just in response, it, okay? <laughs> <laughs> um, but truly, just in response to what you're saying, um, you know, I really appreciate that as far as recognizing the, the the wide spectrum, the diversity that needs to come up, like you said, not dismissing um, people who come from unconventional backgrounds. You know, I can't say I share the, you know, the experiences that you have, but the beauty is, is that um, our experiences of loss or experiences of love and growth, like that's the thing that connects us all together. And, you know, being in pop culture and seeing how sports and music make such an an impact and, and a, a transformation on your life. I mean, in a way that seeing icons like you, seeing um, musicians um, um, who have these messages of hope that inspire you to just be better. Um, I could say for myself, like just starting from humble beginnings, not, you know, truly in the words of Drake, just starting from the bottom. Now we're here, you know, like that, yeah. that is so yeah. key. And I love the, you know, the, the pillars and the principles that you've established, the three D's dedication, determination, and discipline. I mean, I can see that you can parallel that to any musician who we even celebrate at the Rock Hall, I can say the determination part, I think that's all something that we can relate to uh, for a reason of why we are where we are. We got to where we got to. You don't get here without getting there, without determination, without a level of discipline. Um, so, you know, having those key structures really are so important to get into the next level in any field. Those are the things that are, to me, that are just cross, regardless of what industry you're in, that's cross cross industry, three dimensional. Like you need those things to be successful. That's that's real talk, Queen. And you know it's crazy because we live in a microwavable success society now. That if you're not receiving the the instant gratification of like yo, mm -hmm. you doing it or you winning or you know mm -hmm. uh, mood, all those things, people tend to pivot and think that they're not headed down the right path just because they're not getting the applause or the views or the likes immediately. Right. And what I would say to anyone that's listening or watching it is that, you know, it took a long time, like, for me to, you know, be put on this, this soapbox. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, it took a, a lot of hard work. It's a lot of scars, you know, behind yes. this fleece that I'm wearing right now. And it took some time. 
But uh, yeah. just stay true to your past, uh, your passion, and stay true to your mission. And you know, it's a lot of checkpoints, and just enjoy the process of it all. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, I would say that for sure. That I think it, that's what I've heard from other musicians. What I've learned from my experience, just telling stories, like I'm writing narratives about other people's lives, and like trying to find the nuances in there. And that is like, that's key. I mean, you make me think of like someone like a Billie Holiday, like someone who is like just against the grain. I mean, like against all odds, like truly using your platform. Like, I don't care who's trying to show. And like you said, the instant gratification, like, no, some of our, (laughs) some of our most strong uh, leaders and giants in music, in sports, um, in, in the arts in general. I mean, I see you as an artist. Like, it's not I mean, whatever you're doing, that, that's an art form to ball. Like, it's an art form to sing. Oh. It's an art form to finesse and be an entrepreneur. Like, you know, Vince in the room. Like, we, all of these pieces go together. Like, they, they, they require a level of finesse, but that is that determination piece, that, that's that discipline. I mean, you could see it in so many music. I think that's why like the music and the sports, they just intersect so well. Like it's just that universal language. It's that energy, that flow. Yeah. One of my, one of my biggest mentors is Percy Miller, Ma- AKA Master T. It's ah, crazy. Come but, on. You know, come on. he, he, he raised me without like, physically being there, but through his music and lyrics and the struggle yes. and grind, to your point, you know, it's just like, wow, it's crazy. And now, you know, we share conversations all the time and I'm just like, bro, like, it was just like you were speaking from, you know, my my observation. It's crazy. You know, and, and Karan, it's so powerful to hear your story. Uh, you know, our students uh, look up to uh, sports figures and musicians as as leaders in their world and and influencers and to you know hear your story it it just it just makes you appreciate the power that sport has too i'm sure sport played a role in your you know in the remaking of Karan Butler right i mean I'm, there's a lot of other factors but that was one of them yeah. i'm sure because it gives you that opportunity to channel all of that goodness that you had that athletic talent that the determination in the three d's and and um you know it makes you realize the power of sport and music to be transformative to create social impact and social change and we're seeing that today i think more than ever before which is really an exciting time right now in a lot of ways despite what we're going through in a in a in a strange way it's there's there's never been a greater opportunity to move things forward Mm -hmm. definitely in the music sorry I was just gonna say you know what you just said Vince makes me think of Nina Simone I mean so many other artists who have said it in so many different ways but it's an artist's duty to reflect the time that you live in you know like we are all reflections and molds of the environment that we come from so I mean you put that energy it's it's the choice you know it's the dedication it's the the choice of how you want to move forward, how you want to use that impact. And then, you know, getting to that level, getting to the next level, um, it it just matters. Like, how are you going to use your power for change? How are you, how are you going to, how are you going to use this to inspire the next generation? And I love that parallel that connects us all. Yeah. That's so powerful. And, you know, you think of um, um, Amanda Gorman, another Uh, form of art, right? Uh, Yes what she did at the inauguration and the inspiration. I mean, that art form is there. Oh, so it's probably. a prominent mm-hmm. art form, but uh, yeah. you know, just, just profound to see someone like that have an impact the way she did. And we're, we're all talking about her, you know, and uh, it's, it's, it's amazing. And it's the beauty of today. I think I love that level of disruption. I feel like with every quarter, every year, like we are just continuing to disrupt, you know, like to, like you said, to have someone like Amanda Gorman, it's like, hell yeah, it's about time. Like, let's see, uh, you know, like just new faces coming to create change. Like what, what does this new generation have to tell us now? What do the, 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 uh, suppress, what do the oppressed have to teach us? Like, let, let, let that rise to the top. And it's the unconventional voices that you see. I'm not, I mean, I'm a curator, chief curator at the Rock Hall, uh, tra- you know, with this title. I had no idea. I grew up 
Compton, Fontana, LA. Like, I had no idea what a, a curator was. Like, what the hell is a curator? That was in 2007. I was like, what is a curator? Like, what do you even do? But I mean, but again, it's like, I feel like, is that also the level of access? I know we're talking about the things that it takes within you. I mean, there are some determined, dedicated people, but the lack of access, um, that you know minorities see in in the state and we're making changes i'm not going to say we're not we're not but you know coming from where we come from coming from the bottoms um to to now truly have a seat at the table like karan you're you're a coach you know like i'm in this space creating a narrative Vince, like you're we're pushing for change that's not always there so i think vying for access and to really have a seat at the table not to be on the walls but to truly be in the room, I think that's another important piece of so that's how we move forward. Like, real quick, just to like, because you said something, Waka, about disrupting, right? And Vince, I'd love to hear what your thoughts are. Like, I feel, because we work in education a lot, disrupting is like the new education. It's mm -hmm. like that moment of disrupting is like where people start to learn new things. Well, that's right. I, academic, I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. And everyone yeah, I totally agree. I think today, you know, and, and Karan said it earlier with the, with the instant gratification and the short attention span, you almost have to disrupt just to get the, just to command the attention. And then once you've okay. disrupted, now you've got their attention and you can begin to share, you know, where, where we're headed as a society. Um, and, you know, everything from new modalities, online learning, Zoom learning, um, uh, programs packaged in a box asynchronously so that you can do it on your time, you know, but but it all had to start with this level of disruption that got people's attention in the first place. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. I think it's I think it's I think it's so much beauty in, in, in the art, like, you know, the reason why I'm able to pull from a certain place is because my experiences, right? right? And I think all of us, right? We're, 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 we're product of our environments. We pull from a deep place and it makes us go out and be extraordinary. And mm -hmm. the reason why I'm so hopeful is because imagine this generation and what they had to endure and experience. You know, when you talk about COVID, when you talk about, you know, this large movement of, you know, all the isms, the visible racism, uh, what you thought did is this, didn't is this, and then you saw, you know, protests over 50 states, over 13 countries, people from all walks of life unifying and coming together and moving the needle on social change, you know, far like no other, anything we ever experienced in our lifetime. That is their pull from. That is their, you know, new yeah. connection. And it's just like, it's so dope like what the future is going to look like going forward, because I'm just like, wow, I'm seeing these powerful leaders, teenagers, like I wasn't involved in politics and, yes. you know, leading marches and forming coalitions at the age of 14, 16. Like I was, my, my mind was somewhere else. And now I see these young leaders that speak in, that's informed and super educated. It, it, it's just inspiring to watch, man. I'm, I'm so excited for the future for these young people. Mm -hmm. The stories are endless. You know, Walker, yes. I don't know if I got cut off there for a minute, but like, did you get an opportunity to share your story of how you started from the box office to where you are now? Yeah, I mean, I hinted on it a little bit, but it was like, I, when I say the bottom, it was part time in the box office um, <laughs> at, the Grammy, at the Grammy Museum, like literally at the bottom, um, across from uh, at LA Live. And, you know, again, just seeing the environment, I think even just being at LA Live. Um, since Karan, we have you on here, you know, talking about the sports and like, number one, getting in early, seeing ESPN, like really seeing and just watching people. Not even that I was like, Shaq don't know me, but I'm like, I see Shaq coming in early in the yeah. morning with, you know, 4 a.m. doing this or whoever, you know, like, or even just seeing the games and the impact of how, you know, artists, how ball players, how can really shift and move community. It made, it inspired me to hustle harder. I mean, just as a, just as a human being and loving basketball in general, but like, I feel like you, just being at the box office, at the forefront, ground, working from the ground up, that experience definitely cultivated where I am now to understand the functions wow. of 
where I am as a curator, uh, what it what it means to be there, the impact that I can have, even just in that small slither. But it takes growth. It wasn't like you said, the instant gratification. It was not there. This was like ten years of grind, like staying on people's couch, eating top ramen noodles, and I still eat top ramen noodles. But I mean, eating top ramen noodles out of necessity, not out of not out of choice. Um, because I had to, I mean, just really the grind and really appreciating the hustle to get somewhere makes that experience makes, I think your message and how you, you, your output to, to the new generation. Um, I think it just makes it even that much more authentic, that much more impactful. Um, when you go through something like that's what makes us better as human beings. So, um, I mean, that's a little bit about my story, but it, it, it's really been a journey, but I'm honored to share the struggles of musicians and artists across the board. Where, and I mean, an artist, like whether it's a photographer, an author, um, whoever, and share their parallels. We're talking about Nance right now at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and the parallel of music um, and how it impacts um, yeah. sports. So, I mean, there's so many stories that tie us together despite our rigid uh, boxes and demographics that we like to put ourselves in we're way more connected than we think. There's a something that Steve Stout said where uh, in his book, The Tanning of America, it's like, hey, our mental complexions are all what make us the same. Like forget, forget yeah. all this. Once we get rid of this and start thinking about what collectively shapes us, then that's really how we're really gonna have true disruption to move forward. We gotta get those blinders off. So mm -hmm. all that stuff. That's, that's powerful. Yeah, Thank sure. you. Block, I appreciate that. Yeah. And Vince, I know you've done a lot of work using sport to break barriers. Maybe just chime in on that, because I mean, it feels like it's a perfect segue based on what Waka just said. Well, yeah, I, I mean, a couple of thoughts go through my mind. Um, you know, on one level, the folks at uh, Chelsea FC in the UK, the Premier League team, have done an amazing program uh, to say no to anti-Semitism. Oh. They had a bunch of fans in their stands who were who were, had anti-Semitic chants, and what you know what they could have just done was simply banned them and had them go off and never seen them again. But instead, they actually interviewed some of them, and they figured out which ones who showed a bit of remorse and and maybe were just following the crowd and weren't really have an entrenched perspective, and they took them in. Not, not push them away. They took them in. They actually took a group of them to Auschwitz to mm -hmm. understand what the darkness of anti-Semitism meant. And they, and they put them through this, this program, for lack of a better term. And to have a sports organization do that, I mean, fa frankly, we're trying to work with them to take to capture that, that, create that template and bring it to U.S. sports teams. It could be applied to race. It could be applied to gender. It could be applied to, you know, as it was in their case, anti-Semitism or religion. And, and just, again, the, the uh, sports is such a point of convergence that, it, you know, it, it attracts eyeballs. And it, it's the one place where, where, you know, you could put your politics aside and have two people who think about the world very differently sitting next to each other cheering on the Miami Heat or the LA Lakers, or in my case, the Brooklyn Nets, um, you know, and, and just to see, you know, just to bring that, the power of that is, is just, is really, is really amazing. And think of what today, in my mind, the NBA and the WNBA are really leading the way. I mean, I think they're showing society what, you know, what, what can be, they're elevating women. Um, I, you know, the, the WNBA players uh, speak their mind. They, they, have, they seem to have the freedom to do that, but they also have the will to do that, which is really important. And, you know, and I think you can say the same about, about the NBA, which is being considered by most the model league today in professional mm -hmm. sports. Go ahead, Walker. No, I was just saying, as an outsider looking in, I can definitely can feel that. I mean, even just here in the city of Cleveland, like all of the NBA teams, to your point, Vince, that have spoken out, even just using the platform. Again, it's again being being a reflection of the times, and I love that the NBA is leading in that. Not going to call out NFL or whoever. We're not going to go there, but but you know, we're we're not going to go there. But but just to see the many initiatives and the 
the volume that has been raised by the NBA and WNBA is just so inspiring. And I think that's where like, I see that convergence of just, again, like music is truly the soundtrack of all of this. Like you don't get through the revolution without a, sound a soundtrack. Every revolution has one. So I think it's just so powerful that these voices are being raised for equity right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, I think it's amazing that, you know, finally for a long time, the NBA and the brands that's partnered with the NBA, like these financial pillars in these institutions said, you know what, we're going to stand on the right side of justice mm -hmm. and not frown upon the, the, the freedom of speak or your concerns or the traumas that you experience uh, throughout your life with things that still impact you that you're seeing that's happening with people that look like you. And we're going to give you the platform. In fact, we're going to amplify your voice Be before. And we've seen it in, in recent history. You know, you think about Kaepernick and something as mm. simple as just taking a knee. You know, that was like, yo, all he did was take a knee. Yeah. You know, he's just kneeling. He's not doing anything violent. He's not doing anything uh, super, you know, aggressive or anything like that. And I felt like when we had returned back to the bubble, this was like a huge turning point for corporate America and all of, you know, the NBA and all the partners is because they was like, you know, we're going to go beyond symbolic recognition, you know, black lives matter, uh, group economics, things like that are symbolic trophies that's being placed on these jerseys and on the floor of the court that we play on. But we're also going to make financial commitments, you know, not just for this year, but the next 10, 15, 20 years, you know, to impact and move the needle. And we're in this thing together. So for the first time ever in my lifetime, I've seen something different. And that's why I'm hopeful. You know, I've always been hopeful because when you think about our ancestors and you think about things that they had to sacrifice without hope mm -hmm. and without resources, I'm like in a different space now. Like, I'm like, mm -hmm. I see change happening in real time and I know we're going to get there. Mm -hmm. So broader question to the group, you know, Yellow Brick, we're always empowering what we say dreamers of tomorrow to like try to do better than what we did. Quran, I know you got to run, but if you had to give advice to your younger self, what would that piece of advice be? And you know what? I'm glad you asked that, but that dude wouldn't listen. <laughs> 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 My younger self, it, it, it'll, be, it'll be trial and error with him. But it, because I was that way, the younger people today are different and they are more receptive. So right. I would say, man, to, you know, go out there, uh, you know, stay true to your mission. And, you know, as you know, John Lewis said, get in some good trouble, mm -hmm. you know, just get in some good trouble, you know, go out there and get in some good trouble, man. Go out there and just move the needle on change. Go out there and be the best version of yourself. Whatever somebody tell you, you can't do. If it's on the up and up, go out there and prove them wrong. You know, do it for yourself. And, you know, we are the new ancestors. So we're moving the needle yeah. and we're raising the, the bar. I, I appreciate that, man. I'm sure a lot of Yellow Brick students and students in general is going to appreciate that piece of information. Um, yeah. Walker, I have right. the same question for you because I know you always give me some with energy. So, oh, God. <laughs> uh, you know, well, my thing, it, I've already said it, but just again, um, I, I'm going back to Quran's principles because I mean, the way you just spelled it out, just the three D's, like truly being dedicated to your craft, being determined and truly being disciplined, like just keeping your focus. I think, you know, to the students, not not being swayed by what's on the left or the right. I mean, when you're doing that, you a ship without a sail. Like you really need to stay focused on what your grind is and what your passion is, whether it's fruitful or not, you know, stay true to that. I've changed my major uh, in college like several times. I know if students are watching, that's a huge faux pas, like don't do that in your junior year, um, you know, or being afraid of, of trying new things, it, regardless of what the timeline is, like there's no perfect way to do anything. So number one, just to dismiss that and not to dismiss yourself and not to dismiss the gift that you have within yourself. Um, to, to really achieve change. Like change comes in so many different um, shades, shapes, sizes. I mean, really not to just dismiss the, the, the talent and the gift that you have. I would say like, you can be your worst critic at any, at any given point, but it's time that we turn that around yeah. and be your biggest cheerleader. 
Like, you got to be the one, like my mom would say, brush your shoulders off, baby, like David, and encourage yourself and go on. Just encourage yourself and go on. So during that path, that journey, you're going to be by yourself. So just brush your shoulders off and continue to go on. You know, to to just build on that, it's really, I mean, my advice would be get out of your comfort zone, okay? Mm -hmm. And and embrace embrace the world that's different from your world. Reach out. Try to understand what other people are dealing with and people who, who don't look like you, um, you know, and really embrace it. I think this summer, this past summer, woke a lot of people up um, to, to the world that, you know, many of you have known for, for your whole life. Uh, but it, it, it put things in a light that, that made a lot of people say, we can't let this ever happen again. So, so that, what does that mean? It means really work hard to understand what someone else is going through. And it's not just like, boy, I really feel sorry for that person. It's like, no, try to, try to empathize and experience it the best way you can. You're not going to, you're not going to be able to live it every day, but really, really invest your heart in what other people are going through to understand. And that's going to bring us all so much closer together. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, I'm going to piggyback on all of you. I think it's super important to, like, embrace change because I think, you know, we don't get conditioned that change is a normal thing from a young, young stage. You got role. And uh, just put yourself in uncomfortable positions because, like, you can't see it. You definitely ain't going to be it. Right? Come on. Talk, to, <laughs> talk all the time. I have some work with museums as well. And it's mm-hmm. like, did you know what a curator was when you were 10 years old? I didn't. Come on. Right? So like no so, idea. You know what I mean? So like just things like that. Um, I mean I know we're running a little bit over time, but I wanted to say thank you to all three of you for making the time to make this panel rock and roll. Um yeah. we'll definitely have to do this again. But uh, any closing remarks from all three of you guys, start with you, Walker. Yeah, I just really love what Vince said. Um, that's one of my models for life. It's a Tom Petty song, Free Fallen. Like truly, I mean, in everything, like just launch into the deep, just truly to go out there. I mean, every career decision that I've made, it has not been a blueprint or anything. I mean, from taking that part-time job, I was like, well, hell, I need the money. Let me go at the Grammy Museum. I love education. Like, let me let me move to Cleveland. I'm from LA. I don't do snow. Like, okay, like, you know, like that's a, that was another free fall. Like, let's just do it. But to truly, I mean, in every sense of that, to truly embrace life and embrace change, that's how we're going to move forward. Walk, if anyone wants to get to, the, to, to your contact information, what's the uh, best place to hit you? Yes, well, you can find me on Instagram at Waka Anwusa. Just uh, Waka Anwusa, my first and last name. Um, you can find me on Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn. I'm there. So, yes. Karan, yourself, your closing remarks. Yeah, I would just have to say, just you know, keep keep going forward. And I think it's all about seeing is believing. And there's so many examples out here in the world that you can get moved and inspired by. You know, testimonies that's very similar to the upcoming and new future leaders. And I think you should look for those, you know, those individuals and be inspired by them. And, you know, if you able to reach out to them, just like Walker just said, look, my name is Instagram, my LinkedIn. <laughs> yeah. Same thing. Like, it's, easy, yes. it's easy to get to me where I yep. can give you this, this wealth of knowledge that in, in my experience that I can help you go out and be a better version of you. So I think that because the social media is available, it's some knocks to it, but there's so many positives. You can network and reach out to people who you identify and respect and maybe want to see as a mentor in, 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 in your future. But, you know, uh, last but not least, this has been an honor to share this platform with all of you. You know, Dion Walker, Vince, you know, uh, the technical difficulty we had earlier and still staying true and committed to it, man. I, I appreciate everyone. Absolutely. Yeah. Vince, to close it off. I, I just want to say it's really been a privilege to have to have this conversation with this group and and to meet all of you. And we, you know, this needs to happen more. Forums yeah. like this, where we can talk about these issues, where we can talk about what it takes to lift us, each of us up, and collectively us up. You know, and 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 it's a little bit what we're what we're talking about today is a little bit of a celebration of where we are right now, and more importantly, where we're headed. So. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, thanks. That's my thoughts. Thank you. Yeah, no, and I appreciate, appreciate you all it. making the time. 
on behalf of the Yellow Brick team, South by team, um, we can't wait to you know get this out to the people so they all can hear the message. Yeah, huge thanks to everybody. That's great, like yeah. it's awesome to meet you guys. So, yeah. <laughs> good luck the rest of the season. No, yeah. For sure. yeah, thank you. We I know there's some. Hey, I'm gonna take that from a Nets fan. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs>